So I'm very uh, honored and uh, yeah, extremely honored and I feel blessed and I'll say it a third time, honored to be uh, in this just August assembly among senior devotees and, and everyone else here. It's a great honor and uh, I pray for uh, your kind wishes and blessings. Hare Krishna. So we're reading from the 10th canto, chapter 15, the killing of the Denuka, the ass demon. And we're reading verses 28 through verse 35. So I'll read the verses myself up to 35. And then we'll just read 35 together if that's okay, because that one has the purport. Bhala pravishya bahubhyam talan sampari kampayan falani patayam asa matan gaja ivo jasa. Lord Balaram entered the Tala forest first. Then, with his two arms, he began forcefully shaking the trees with the power of a maddened elephant, causing the Tala fruits to fall to the ground. Text 29. Hearing the sound of the falling fruits, the ass demon Denuka ran forward to attack, making the earth and trees tremble. Text 30. The powerful demon rushed up to Lord Baladev and sharply struck the Lord's chest with the hooves of his hind legs. Then, Denuka began to run about, braying loudly. Text 31. Moving again towards Lord Balaram, O king, the furious ass situated himself with his back towards the Lord. Then, screaming in rage, the demon hurled his two hind legs at him. Text 32. Oh yes, there is a short purport. Purport. The word upakroshta indicates an ass and also one who is crying out nearby. Thus, it is indicated herein that the powerful Denuka made horrible, angry sounds. Text 32. Lord Balaram sees Denuka by his hooves whirled him about with one hand and threw him into the top of a palm tree. Then, violent wheeling motion killed the demon. Text 33. Lord Balaram threw the dead body of Denukasura into the tallest palm tree in the forest. And when the dead demon landed in the treetop, the tree began shaking. The great palm tree, causing a tree by its side also to shake, broke under the weight of the demon. The neighboring tree caused yet another tree to shake, and this one struck yet another tree, which also began shaking. In this way, many trees in the forest shook and broke. There's also a one-sentence purport here before we get to verse 35, which we'll read together. Purport. Lord Balaram threw the demon Denuka so violently into the great palm tree that a chain reaction was unleashed and many towering palm trees shook and then broke with a great crashing sound. Text 34. Because of Lord Balaram's pastime of throwing the body of the ass demon into the top of the tallest palm tree, all the trees began shaking and striking against one another as if blown about by powerful winds. And now we get to verse 35. Naitaj Chitram Bhagavati Kyanante Jagat Ishvare Ota Protam Idam Yasmin 
ಭಗವತಿಯನಂತೆ ಜಗದೀಶ್ವರೆ ಓತ ಪ್ರೋತ ತಾಂತು ಸ್ವಂಗ ಯಥಾಪಿತ್ರ ಭಗವತಿ ಯನಂತೆ ಜಗದೀಶ್ವರೆ ಓತ ಪ್ರೋತ ತಾಂತು ಸ್ವಂಗ ಯಥಾಪತ ನಾಟ್ ಏತಾತ್ ವಿಸ್ ಚಿತ್ರ ಸರ್ಪ್ರೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಭಗವತಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಹೀ ಇಂಡೀಡ್ ಅನಂತೆ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಅನ್ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಜಗತ್ ಈಶ್ವರೆ ದ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಓತ ಪ್ರೋತ spread out horizontally and vertically idam this universe yasmin upon whom tantu shu upon its threads anga my dear parikshit yatha just as pataha a cloth translation My dear Parikshit that Lord Balaram killed Denukasura that Lord Balaram killed Denukasura is not such a wonderful thing considering that he is the unlimited personality of Godhead the controller of the entire universe indeed the entire cosmos rests upon him just as a woven cloth rests upon its own horizontal and vertical threads purport unfortunate persons cannot appreciate the blissful pastimes of the supreme lord in this connection shila jiva goswami explains that the supreme lord possesses unlimited potency and strength as expressed here by the word ananti The Lord exhibits a tiny fraction of his power according to the need of a particular situation. Lord Balaram desired to vanquish the gang of demoniac asses who had unlawfully seized the Talavan forest, and therefore he exhibited just enough divine opulence to easily kill Denukasura and the other demons. <coughs> So here's the translation once again. My dear Parikshit, that Lord Balaram killed Denukasura is not such a wonderful thing, considering that he is the unlimited personality of Godhead, the controller of the entire universe. Indeed, the entire cosmos rests upon him just as a woven cloth rests upon its own horizontal and vertical threads. Jai. ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂದಸ್ಯಾಜ್ಞಾಂಚನಾಶಲಕೂರು ಮಿಲಿತ ಜೇನ ತಸ್ಮಾ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೆ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟಂ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಮೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪಕಧಾಮ ದಿ ಸ್ವಾಪತಂತಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಂಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಾಗನರಘುನತ ಸಜೀವ ಸದೈತ ಸವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀವಿಶಾಕಂಬಿತಂಶ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದಿನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತತ್ತ ಕಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗೀ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಂದವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಂಶಕಲ್ಪತೂಭ್ಯಸ್ಚಾಕೃಪಾಸಿಂಧೂಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತಗದಾಧಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो गिवन दैट कृष्णा इज ऑल पावरफुल एंड दैट ही रिसिप्रिकेट्स the more our desires become pure the more our life and our especially our relationship with krishna will become exciting and ever more blissful and spontaneous and therefore what do we desire allow me a sh- quick anecdote not even an anecdote just a personal we're supposed to speak from personal experience so a personal story that relates to to the theme of the class about maybe 10 15 years ago i was in south india and i was curious to visit uh, the ashram of sai baba not to convert to impersonal advaita vedanta philosophy but i was just curious because he he was at least such a somewhat of a big phenomena worldwide so i got some books from prabhupad some small books and and I was alone and and I went there not knowing where I would stay just and um and so you know that whole city instead of having beautiful pictures of radha krishna everywhere you have pictures of this person different mood and um I remember I met one jan we went to I went to his ashram and in the midst of the ashram I was like passing out prabhupada's books and actually one of the <laughs> ashram in charge he was from europe he came up to me i remember and he said like like you you are christians you really have audacity i mean he was saying it in a friendly way but still shocked that you know you come all the way to the uh, inside the ashram of sai baba and you're distributing your literatures here and so my point is this i i met this gentleman another man who happened to have a little studio apartment there and he just he said listen i'm going to i don't know where bangalore for the next 3 days here use my pl- use, use my flat and so like that i had all of a sudden this studio apartment nice place to stay a kitchen where i could you know cook, cook and then and have a little base for 3 days to pass out you know a insignificant little number of books and i saw this as krishna's arrangement i saw this as krishna reciprocating beautifully wonderfully with my little desire you know to <laughs> to to do a little bit of outreach work in putta party you know i think we can all say that we've all in our spiritual life had the experience of krishna reciprocating reciprocating either with a an inner desire of let's say purification or a desire to help the mission of chaitanya mahaprabhu isn't it whether we're new bhaktas or whether we're super advanced i'm pretty sure i can bet that we've all had that experience that that, that was krishna that was krishna how many times the devotees say that was krishna's arrangement right the purer the desire though the more fun the reciprocation is though now here our verse mentions that krishna bala balaram in particular is all powerful um this verse particularly reminds us of bhagavad gita 77 uh, where where krishna where krishna says that there's no truth superior to me and everything rests upon me not as cloth threads but as pearls strung on a thread and elsewhere um particularly in the purport to 95 prabhat quotes this uh, this famous saying parasya shaktir vividaya shruyate svabhaviki gyana balakriya cha um which translates as the supreme lord is performing inconceivably wonderful pastimes displaying his energy his person is full of different potent energies and and this is a great sentence and his determination is itself actual fact in other words we believe we have faith that our, uh, our scriptures say that not only is god a person not only is krishna that supreme person but he's all powerful and anything he wants i mean his determination is itself actual fact and so therefore when you accept when we accept that god's a person and god has this inconceivable potency he's all powerful right 
Prabhupada actually mentions few times that unless we accept the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Personality of God, there's no meaning to the word God. So once it's accepted that God's a person and he's inconceivably powerful and his determination is actual fact, then as, as we say in the United States, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit to his pastimes. And the sky is the limit to his reciprocation as well. And hence, accepting that premise, it shouldn't be a surprise that that supreme person, out of his own sweet will, desires to, for example, appear as a boar, in a such and on the form of a boar. Something that our Muslim friends may have a little bit of difficulty accepting. You know, in the Islamic world, the boar is considered, um, so it'll be an extra effort to explain. No, no, this is a transcendental form. Uh, now we're coming up to Lord, to Lord Chaitanya's appearance day. So speaking of boar, imagine yourself in, in, in the house or in the, in the shoes, so to speak, of Murari Gupta in Navadweep, and all of a sudden Lord Chaitanya comes into your house and, and he appears as a boar. The Chaitanya Bhagavat mentions that, that Lord Chaitanya appeared to, to Murari Gupta as a boar. I mean, you imagine, all of a sudden you have this very attractive Brahmin boy, Nimai Pandit, who transforms as a boar and maybe he's standing on his you know standing or on, on his fours and he's starting to speak in, in human language <laughs> and he's starting to say you know there's this Mayavadi in Varanasi who who says that I do not have a form but look you know I have a form so as the purport of this verse says those who are unfortunate who may not have faith or who don't accept this inconceivable potency of the Supreme Personality may have difficulty in accepting these pastimes but for a soul who accepts the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Lord, then the Lord appearing as a fish, or as a half man, half lion, or any form of Krishna does, that, that we hear about. I mean, there's, right, all the, there's as many avatars as waves in the ocean, is not surprising, because ultimately he is the transcendental autocrat. Right. I think it was that Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasya that course coined term. There's that story I think that Prabhupada tells of you know of Narada Muni being asked by a Brahmin, how many are you oh, where are you going? I'm going to Vaikuntha. Oh, please ask my Lord how many how many more lifetimes it's gonna take me, right? And then there's also a cobbler who asks the same and and then the Lord tells Narada, well you tell the you tell the Brahmin that he's still got a lot of lives yet. And then, Nar and then, and then the, but the cobbler is you know, going to come back right away. And, and so, uh, according to the story, Narada Muni asks the Lord, why is that? And he said, just see, just ask uh, the Brahmin what I was doing or something like that. And tell him I was, I, was, I was putting an elephant through the eye of a needle, right? And so he goes back to the Brahmin, okay, how many lifetimes, am, am, am I going right away, am I getting liberated right away? Oh no, no, the Lord, sorry, the Lord said a few more lifetimes, how is that possible? And he said, well, the Lord was, you know, threading the, uh, an elephant through the eye of a needle. And then again, how is that possible? That's not possible. But the cobbler, when the Arda Muni tells that simple soul, you know, that, that's what, bhakti doesn't depend on any material qualification. Bhakti, it's about bhakti, regardless of whether we, a soul has extra material qualifications or not. So that cobbler had a pure heart. Oh, my, my, how wonderful. He totally accepts it on faith. How wonderful that this Lord is passing an elephant through the eye of a needle. Right? So, the Lord is inconceivable. He's got inconceivable potencies and he reciprocates with the desires. And, and when those desires of the pure souls, well, that's kind of redundant because the desires of the pure souls are pure, then all sorts of magic takes place. And, and we see this here, this wonderful reciprocation in the pastime of Deinuka. The boys, the coward boys ask Krishna, hey, there's these really, there's this really cool forest, let's go, let's go eat the fruits. Like, uh, Mukunda Dat Prabhu was talking about yesterday how like he was kind of bringing it into the realm of mundane not yeah mundane material friendships like one friend will tell another hey let's do this yeah okay that's a good idea so the coward boy spontaneously spontaneously and that's the key factor spontaneously 
suggested to Krishna, hey, let's go to the Tao forest, let's go try to eat those fruits, but you know, there's this demon. And then the Bhagavatam says that Krishna immediately said, okay, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. So Krishna, you see, is immediately reciprocating with the spontaneous loving desire of the cowherd boys. And not just of the cowherd boys, a little bit earlier in this chapter, there's this interesting, I find, passage where the trees, the trees of Vrindavan, they bow down to Krishna. And then the narrator mentions that Krishna smiled because he understood the desire of the trees, the fruits, and the flowers. Right? Everything is personal and conscious in the spiritual world. We hear so even the fruits, even the flowers. And so they had this desire. What is that desire? To serve, to bend down to the Lord's lotus feet. And Krishna smiled. He reciprocated. So the Bhagavatam describes, gives a picture of the spiritual world as a place where there's these liberated souls who have absolutely no selfish desire. And a Supreme Lord who reciprocates fully and in full confidence with those pure souls. Garuda Prabhu, uh, senior Prabhupada disciple, wrote this really wonderful book on the, the Rasa Lila pastimes, the five chapters from the Bhagavatam. And, and it's thanks to that book that it kind of dawned on me. I wouldn't have read it otherwise because I don't know Sanskrit. But if you look at the first verse of chapter 29 of the 10th canto. It's mentioned there that the Supreme Personality of God, had, even He, there's the word api that's used, even He, that Supreme Lord, during that night where there was this breeze of jasmine, flowers, smell, and, and the full moon, even He turned His face towards love's delight. And then here's the, the interesting sentence. He did so by taking full refuge in Yoga Maya. So in other words, Yoga Maya emanates from God in order to hmm, increase rasa. There's such an intimate relationship between pure souls and God in the spiritual world. There's such a complete absence of any tinge of selfishness that God becomes so confident in the desires and in the choices of those pure souls that He's willing to literally like abdicate His kingdom, like a king abdicates his, you know, his scepter. You know the word abdicate, like I'm the king but I, I give up the power. So God says, okay, Yoga Maya, I'm, you know, I'm yours, I'm, do whatever you want, kind of. You know, God, it's so beautiful, God surrenders or takes full refuge of um, of Yoga Maya. The Sanskrit is Yoga Mayam Upashritaha. Yoga Mayam Upashritaha. And hence all sorts of wonderful, wonderful, beautiful pastimes take place. Right? But as this verse tells us, unfortunate people, they, uh, they may not have that faith and therefore what to speak of reciprocation, they might not even you know, believe that there is such a thing as a personal God and so on. Lord Brahma was bewildered, right? When there, we, correct me if I'm wrong, but even Brahma, when he saw Krishna eating from his cowherd boyfriend's plates, he said, nah, how, how can that be the Supreme Personality of Godhead, right? I remember uh, when I was 20 years old um, in Paris, uh, I was just discovering Krishna consciousness, and I had been, you know, taking uh, some, some, not some, but a considerable amount of alcohol and drugs and, and having illicit sex. And, and so as a natural consequence, as a biological consequence of that, I was somewhat depressed. And so instead of advising me to, you know, stop sinful activity and live in the mode of goodness and practice Krishna consciousness, my parents had this idea to send me to see a psychiatrist. So I went to see a psychiatrist two times. And, and so, you know, new bhakta. So I gave this guy a, 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 Krishna, a Krishna book the first time around because I was finding, you know, great solace from this Krishna consciousness. 
And then the next time around, when, when I came back, he had read it a little bit. And I remember he told me, he said, you know that, you know that Krishna says that Krishna, the book says that Krishna swallowed the, the forest fire. But do you actually believe that? that it's obviously allegorical. It's obviously mythological, right? And I'm not saying this to brag, like, you know, I have that faith. But, you know, we do believe in miracles of Krishna consciousness via the mercy of the devotee. So I'm not saying this to show off. I'm just saying this as a testimony to the process of bhakti. That, so ordinary me said, no, this is Krishna. <laughs> Krishna swallowed the forest fire. <laughs> really? And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I never saw him again after. So that reciprocation also takes place in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Again, based on the pure desire. The purer the desire, the more fantastic the reciprocation is. One example that came to mind is, is you see Haridas Thakur. What did Haridas Thakur desire? He asked the Lord something. If I'm not mistaken, he said, let me, I want to, you know, you're going to wind up your pastimes. I don't want to, I want to leave before you, correct? And what did the Lord do? The Lord fulfilled his desire. And, and in this way, Haridas Tagore was able to literally have Lord Chaitanya's foot on his chest and looking up to his face as he left his body. Right. So, ye yata mam prapadyante tam sataiva bhajam yaham. That's one takes shelter of me, I reciprocate. And so Krishna reciprocates materially and he, he reciprocates most wonderfully uh, spiritually. You know, the gopis want to see, they want Krishna as their husband, so <laughs> Krishna arranges to steal their clothes and, and, and then they have to, you know, stand naked in front of Krishna and as a result that means that they're officially uh, Krishna's wives, so their desire is fulfilled. Right? And, and here again, this example of the tala fruits, like, hey, let's go eat those fruits, the tala fruits. Okay, sure, Krishna says. The reciprocation. The reciprocation. Because it's, it's all pure. Anyabhilashita shunyam jnana karma dhyanabhitam. Mukundadat Prabhu again quoted this verse yesterday. It's such an important verse. This is what we're all about. Pure, devotional service, uninterrupted, unmotivated, just desiring to please Krishna and, and, and nothing else. And when you have that pure devotional service, then the reciprocation between God and the soul becomes really full of freedom and spontaneity. It's just, it's, it's amazing. So it's, it's beautiful, right? We can't not talk about Prabhupada in this connection in terms of Krishna reciprocating with, with Prabhupada's desires. When you look at Prabhupada's poem on the Jaladutta, what is he, what's his desire? What does he pray to Krishna? I wish that you may deliver them. I wish that you may deliver them. That's how it happens. The pure devotee desires the deliverance of fallen souls and Krishna reciprocates. Krishna reciprocates. I wish that you may, he had this such a burning desire that Krishna, just to begin with, makes the whole Atlantic Ocean so peaceful, right? That, that uh, Captain Pandya asks Prabhupada, please come back with me to India, because, right? And then, and then Prabhupada himself said, uh, there's this beautiful letter in 72. <coughs> let, let me read it to you. Prabhupada says, when I was alone in your New York, I was thinking, who will listen to me in this horrible, sinful place? All right, I shall stay a little longer. At least I can distribute a few more of my books. That is something. But Krishna was all along preparing something I could not see. And he brought you to me, one by one, sincere American boys and girls, to be trained up for doing the work of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And here, Prabhupada says, now, I, now, in retrospect, now I can see that this was a miracle. Otherwise, your city of New York, one single old man with only a few books to sell, because you know, the money that he got, 
that he brought, the few rupees that he brought to, into, to America. So we often hear Prabhupada came with, what, 14 rupees or 20 rupees or whatever. But even those rupees, he was, there was no exchange booth. <laughs> he couldn't exchange those rupees, so he literally comes penniless. But he had those books, he sells them, you know, during that one year. We don't even know where Prabhupada was, how he slept, where he was. I don't know, that, that first year is very sort of mysterious. How can he survive what to speak of introducing God consciousness movement for saving the humankind? That is Krishna's miracle. Now I can see it. Right. Let me briefly tell you how the Srimad Bhagavatam, if you don't know the story, any of you, even if you do this, know the story, how did the Srimad Bhagavatam enter Russia? It's kind of like a hot topic now that we pray for for more Krishna consciousness over there. But how did the Srimad Bhagavatam enter Russia? Does anyone know the story? Maybe devotees from France may know it. Book fair. Book fair? Mandakini Mataji from France, she tells the story how, um, and you're talking about Krishna reciprocating with the desire. So as you know, Mandakini was the first, the, 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 the wife of, I mean, she was praying to, 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 to Radha Landanishwar in London she had heard that if the guru gives you an instruction that's very difficult to follow, if you follow that instruction, you get extra blessings. So she was like praying like that, like, my Lord, please, you know, let Prabhupada ask me something really difficult. Prabhupada comes back from Moscow. Next morning, hey, Mandakini, Prabhupada wants to see you. She shows up to Prabhupada's room. Prabhupada says, hey, Mandakini, according to her words, would you like to go to Moscow and marry Bhakta Anatoly? A man she had never met, didn't know anything about. This is like behind the Iron Curtain. She's this young, you know, early 20 Parisian lady. <laughs> Talk about a hard thing <laughs> that her guru asks. And so she says she swallowed them. And she said, okay, yes, Prabhupada. And so that's how she, you know, started going to Moscow undercover uh, as part of, you know, a tourist tour to go see the, the Bolshoi Ballet, you know, on the plea of, of, of tourism. So after she had been going to Russia several times, she thought, okay, I gotta bring this, I gotta bring the Bhagavatam into Russia. So she decided to take, a, to take the Bhagavatam, the first canto. And she took a train from Paris to um, Warsaw, Poland, and then there was a connecting train from uh, Warsaw to Moscow. And in the train from Moscow, from Warsaw to Poland, she met some lady and they started talking and then that lady saw that she had the Bhagavatam and she told Mandakini, are you, are you crazy? You're, when you come to the board, when you arrive in Moscow, you know, the, the Soviet security is going to search you up and down and they're going to not only confiscate this book, but you're going to go to jail. So Mandakini tells that, says that she, not knowing what to do, she went outside in the little, you know, hall separating, you know, just in front of all the cubicles of the train and she was leaning out you know looking at the at the scenery pass by praying to Krishna what to do what to do and then just at that moment she saw an Indian gentleman walk you know out towards that little aisle from two or three cubicles down mid 1970s there were very few Indian people in Russia so what to speak of in the same train you know and so she sees this man and she thought well let's let me try something. So she approaches him, namaste, and he says to her, oh, please come in. So he invites her into, the, into, her, into his you know, cubicle, or however you call it, cabin, or how do you say it in English, um, where people are sitting? A compartment. Thank you, Prabhu. So they start speaking, and yes, I'm going to see my husband, and, and he says, oh, well, when she asks him, what do you do? He says, I work for the Indian, uh, for the Indian ambassador. The Indian ambassador's son was the one who was walking with this Bhakta Anatoli and saw Shamasundar Prabhu wearing a dhoti and, and, uh, and, 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 and spotted him. And, then, and that's how you know, Anatoli got to meet Prabhupada and Prabhupada initiated him the next morning before he left. So Mandakini was like, oh, well, I, what a coincidence. I have a gift for the son of your boss. Can you please give it to him? And he said, yeah, sure. So he opened up his... Um, diplomatic briefcase and diplomatic you know if you work at the embassy your briefcase is beyond search because it's property of that government you know so he opened up his diplomatic briefcase mandakini put the primat bhagavatam he closed the briefcase click, click, and that's how the bhagavatam entered into into russia 
Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. So talk about reciprocation, right? Talk about reciprocation. So to, to, to finish, Krishna says in the Gita that there's a wheel that's been made to turn, right? In the, in, in, I think it's 616 or evam pravartitam chakram. There's a wheel that's been made to turn and it's in the connection with the demigods being pleased by yagya on earth and, and in this way. So in terms of bhakti, you have to ask yourself, okay, how much, and you know, I'm preaching to myself, but how much of that wheel are you keeping turning all the time, nonstop? Like, how much are you actually, okay, I'm serving Krishna, and it doesn't matter whether you're a brahmachari or a grihasta, that's besides the point. How much are you actually giving to Krishna of your life, of your consciousness, and how much are you kind of, you know, whenever the wheel comes back down, you take a little bit for yourself, or a lot, or you, you literally put a, a stick in the wheel, you know, when you break the four regulative principles, for example, you're like really putting a wheel right in the, <laughs> you're really stopping that wheel, you know. So how much are, are, are you giving to Krishna, how much are you holding back, and, and, and what do you want from Krishna? You know, how, how much do you want to become a pure devotee? You know, St. Augustine used to say, like, my Lord, please give me um, chastity, but just not yet. <laughs> so, you know, how much do you want pure devotional service now, you know? How much do you want pure devotional service? And, and if you feel like you should feel that, oh, I wish I had more attachment to Krishna, I wish I was more devoted, I wish I was more, you know, 100% involved in, in pure devotional service, then... You know, then we have our whole sadhana bhakti program. It's like an open secret. You know, chant good rounds and attend the Bhagavatam class and read Srila Prabhupada's books and hear lectures that inspire you and, and, and do Harinam Sankirtan and, and help the mission of Lord Chaitanya give prasadam, distribute Prabhupada's books, give lectures, do a podcast. With. By doing these activities of, of, of sadhana bhakti, living in the mode of goodness, following the four regulative principles, etc., etc., then... Maya Saktamana Parta Yogam Yunjan Madashaya Samshayam Samagramam. Gradually, Shimbatam Sakata Krishna or Shavanadi Shud, what is it? Nitasita Krishna Prema Sadi Kabunoi, Shavanadi Shudda Chite Karayuda. Gradually, 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 you'll reawaken that dormant love. Gradually, 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 you'll, you know, you'll imbibe or reawaken that intense desire and that pure desire. That pure desire. To, to serve Krishna. And, and when that happens, you can be sure that, that Krishna will reciprocate in even more wonderful and, and beautiful ways as he's doing with, uh, with the coward boys. So before concluding and saying a few words of conclusion, may I ask for any corrections or comments or questions?
Well, you can have faith and like devotional intelligence, buddhi. Krishna talks about buddhi all the time in the Gita. But perhaps, I'm just venturing, perhaps some mercy has to be there. Some mercy. The, the, the mercy factor is perhaps the, the key thing here. Isn't there a verse where like, unless you, you know, someone has smeared the dust from the period of, you know, like forget it. Or unless you've gotten the mercy, just atakshi krishna nabadi na bhavet grayam indriyai. Like you will not understand Krishna. But please you say. I appreciated how you kept a single theme throughout the class. It made it really easy to ingest. And uh, it was, had great force behind it, too, because it's such a uh, central point that it all comes down to us and what's our intention, regardless of what our position is in the world, even for an animal uh, or of any type of human being or from whatever situation we're in, it's the intention and we emphasize that really uh, in a clear way. Appreciate it. And I also like uh, the personal anecdotes. Uh, you mentioned the coming to Krishna consciousness and the interaction with your one time <laughs> therapist. And then just the contrast between something Beautiful question. Is Krishna like is Krishna a young, a young boy who plays the role of God, or <laughs> or vice versa, or can can God pick up a stone? No, can God create a stone so heavy that he can't pick it up? Right. <laughs> Giriraj, your Guru Maharaj, I think gives a fantastic answer in terms of distinguishing between tattva and rasa. So in terms of tattva. No, Krishna is always omniscient. He's always in control. He knows everything that's happening, always, philosophically, theologically, in terms of tattva. So in rasa, no, he just he forgets, you know, and then let, 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 the, let the spontaneous show happen, however it's going to happen. So in other words, if I understand correctly, after maybe it's not even understanding, it's beyond understanding. That Krishna arranges and he doesn't know he's arranging. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. Inconceivable. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So just to finish, because I think I don't want to go over time, uh, but maybe one last question and then we'll, we'll wrap up. This violation uh, will be over there. Oh, actually, this Prabhu, not because he's wearing saffron, but because he did raise his hand first. <laughs> so, no, Prabhu did raise his hand first. So, anyway, okay. Krishna's arrangement. Thank you very much for your enlightening lecture. Thank you for the opportunity to ask this question. Uh, we are all in 
started the marketing, and the white team marketing. We are struggling like anything, everybody knows what, so what is going on. And uh, I want to ask you that, um, as you said, Krishna arranges, according to the proportion of our surrender, he gives us his resuscitation. But this is sometimes the like business. I will give you as much as you surrender to me. Uh, sometimes it makes me a little bit uh, feel not so good. But in other way, I will tell you about my experience in Krishna consciousness being 30 years, 30 years in Vrindavan. Die. Yes, in Vrindavan. It's amazing. I couldn't believe myself. But nevertheless, I want to ask you, uh, we are struggling like anything. We are trying to move forward, but it doesn't go so quickly, as uh, fast as we want. And sometimes, at a certain age, we are becoming too much exhausted. I want to do from every day to already to do Harinam. I'm doing Harinam from 5 to 7, only every day, non-stop Harinam is Mahabal. And book distribution for 20, 30 years in Muslim countries, now it's here and in Mayapur and all India is Harinam uh, Sankirtan. And uh, at the same, certain point we are becoming exhausted. And now not so much physical strength to do more. But at the same time I remember what Krishna said, as much you surrender and give you as much in proportion to that. So I am using this this you see the hope. This is like Maharaj said, Ashapaka, hope against the hope. I'm losing it. And my Krishna consciousness is becoming diminished. I am I am observing it. What to do? What to do? How to come to Krishna in this lifetime, as Srila Prabhupada said, in one lifetime it is possible to come to Krishna, to go to Vrindavana and enjoy with him there, with his pure devotees and render service. What to do? Or well, maybe it's a sign of your humility. It reminds us of a story where someone asked Bhaktisiddhanta Sarzata Thakur, I'm not making it, you know, Guru Maharaj, I'm not making advancement. I feel like I'm not advancing. And, and he said that that's, that's a sign of advancement. That's the first point. And the second point is, from my understanding, Bhakti doesn't depend on any material consideration. Kaviraj Goswami says, I'm blind. I, can, I can't even see what to speak of, write a book. So, so devotional service is... Uh, 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 I mean, even thinking of these devotees in, you know, in Ukraine, like nothing can stop Krishna consciousness, even, whether it's war, whether it's physical uh, frailty, you can chant in your bed and listen you know, to, to Krishna book online. So nothing can stop your, your devotional service. So just to finish, just to wrap up, so we're, I, I mean, we should be so happy to be so grateful to be in Vrindavan Dam, so grateful that we're part of a, of a personal philosophy. You want to ask, your, should we go on for a few more minutes? Okay. Brahmachari comment. I was just thinking, uh, according to the theory of one's desire, to that degree, the test will be even greater. Srila Prabhupada had a very, very strong desire to give Krishna consciousness to the world. But the test that came along with it is extremely severe, so I was just appreciate the point that you're making, that the desire has to be there. And simultaneously, if we're trying to cultivate a pure desire, the test in order to achieve that desire is, is going to be very severe simultaneously, because Krishna wants to see how much do you really want this. It's just a thought that came to me. Good point. Yeah, yes, so just to, to yes, so we are, uh, we're in a personal philosophy. We're really lucky to be, to believe that God's a person and to accept that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And it's, we sh we're, we're, we're so fortunate to, to, to accept that the pastimes as described in this 10th canto of the Bhagavatam are, are reality. This is, the ab this is the absolute truth. This is actual reality. Like God appears as a boar. God plays with boys with tall fruits, God dances on the bank of a river with beautiful ladies with a full moon and they're all expansions of his pleasure potency, etc, etc, etc. 
we should be so grateful and, and we should just continue doing what we're doing, trying to, trying, trying to be sincere, trying to serve, trying to chant Hare Krishna, trying to hear and chant and, and serve the devotees and serve the Dham and in Vrindavan Dham and extra mercy. And in this way we can be as happy as possible in this life and as Prophet says at the end, go back home, back to God. Shri Prabhupada Ki, Shri Bhagavatam Ki.